What's the tea? Well, spill it. Here I go. Why y'all home? Well, home well everybody, the Puffy Combs trial has begun, and you know, the prosecutors are saying that Puffy fired at least one gunshot into the ceiling uh, of the nightclub, boy. which is like ridiculous. Um, this whole thing happened back, of course, in December of '99. Um, the comment came during the opening statements. And three people were injured during a shooting. Of course, Shine and Anthony Wolf Jones, the um, bodyguard, will also be standing trial. Um, they're also saying that when when the gunshots rang out, now whoever threw the, um, you know, pulled the trigger, whatever, Puffy ran out of the club so fast and got into the waiting SUV that it wasn't until he got into the truck that he realized that he left Jennifer, Jennifer. behind, <laughs> along with his bodyguard Anthony Wolf. He just like ran. You know, forget it. That's a true sign of an itch bag, by the way. Uh, you know, leaving as well. I thought it was an unkpay. Well, eventually, itch Jen bay. Jennifer and unk Wolf bay. made their way to the SUV without Puffy. Right. They ran 11 lights to elude the cops. Um, supposedly, it was Puffy, although people are saying they saw a female hand tossing a gun out the window. Uh -huh. And um, then, when the cops stopped them, they found a second gun, of course, in the car. Right. All four of the occupants, the driver, the bodyguard, Puffy and Jennifer, were handcuffed and taken down to the precinct. And um, eventually, Puffy and his bodyguard, Wolf, were overheard talking about their plot to bribe the driver to take the rap for the gun. And Puffy was overheard saying, and I quote, because the prosecutor said this, I can't go to jail. I'm Puff Daddy. Well, you uh, know. Okay. All right, now I'm going to give you a quick, brief breakdown of Damn some of the jurors, right. and I'll give you the rest on the next down low, or if you call and you express interest about this particular case, I'll chat with you. A white man in his late 20s or early 30s, he's a paralegal at a corporate law firm. He's a college graduate, and he has a favorable impression of Puffy. That's juror number one. Number two is a middle-aged white woman who's retired from print uh, media. Um, she and her husband live on the Upper West Side of New York. They have two grown children, a son who works in printing, and a daughter who's a yoga instructor. Okay. That's juror number two. Two. Number three is a white native New Yorker in her 50s um, who works with autistic children in uh -oh. the city's public school. Oh, no. She lives in midtown Manhattan with her husband, who's an educator, and their 22-year-old daughter lives in Oregon, where she's working on her master's degree in speech pathology. Mm. Juror number four is a black man in his 30s. He's a corrections officer in the Federal Detention Center mm -hmm. over in Brooklyn. He does own some puffy CDs. Wow. Number four is a black man in his mid-50s who works as a commercial tax collector in New York City. He's lived in Harlem for 20 years, and he has a 30-year-old son. And the last one that I'm going to introduce you to now is a black woman in her 40s who works as a peace officer at a public library. Um, oh. she's, she's also been involved in checking departing baggage, uh, you know, from the, from the library. Uh, for stolen books. <laughs> so she's a woman who lives on the right That's side the of the wall. Okay. So anyway, those are the six of the 12 um, jurors, and I'll introduce you to the other 12 in the next down low, where I'll also give you some shocking new information about Jesse Jackson. And I got something on Brandy. Be here, okay? All right. That's what's up at 651 News and Traffic Ooh. is up next. We are the World Famous Dream Team Show. Write it down. It's the World Famous Dream Team Show. Dream Team Show. There's somebody calling on the... Um, That's him. How do you know? Because I spoke to them. He's calling back and he doesn't care if it's on the air. Okay, where are we going to go? Good. Then we're going to be on the air. Hello? Hi, Mr. Combs. Oh, okay. Now we're down to Mr. Combs. What do I call him? What do I call him? Uh, Mr. Combs is on the line. Uh, oh, like the president. Hi, Puffy. Hey, what's up, girl? How are you? Just, 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 just chilling, just, you know, just watching this news bugging out, man. Yeah, I was just um, doing the, the story on you and Jay-Z in donating a million dollars to the American Red Cross. Yeah. That's good work. Yeah, you know, I mean, um, it, it's just crazy just looking at it. It's def definitely a sad time. And, um, you know, we j j just we were both on the phone talking. Yeah. Felt like, felt like if we could do something, we needed to really kind of do something now. Yeah. And um, so, so we that's what we decided to do. Mm. And you know, it's it's just it's crazy. Like you know, so hopefully the money will help. And, and we're we just praying right now. Our prayers are just that some help gets there right now. Why and, did you, why? And, you know? Ho hopefully, you know, the government will stand up and do what they're supposed to do. Here's the thing, um, because I noticed you chose the American Red Cross. I happen to be doing a radiothon on Tuesday. We're going to be on the radio for 12 hours. Yeah. Um, and, and we're giving the money to the American Red Cross. As a matter of fact, the money's going directly there. There's no checks that are being mailed to, to here at the radio station. But we chose the American Red Cr Cross because I've researched it, and, and we as a show have researched it. And the American Red Cross actually does put money in the hood as well. Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. And, yeah that, 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 that was our, our reason. And also, exactly. that was the only people we were even seeing out there. If you saw anybody on the news, it was the Red Cross. Yeah. And, 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 you know, it's like you want to go over there yourselves. And, and this is just a start for what we're both going to do. For us, you know, we haven't really done, we haven't really done any videos together. I uh, haven't done a lot together. We thought this was, was a great statement for us to get together and try to, try to help to get the ball rolling. And these are also people that have supported us. And th these are like our brothers and sisters. Yeah. We, we say that, you know, as, as black people, but it's really true. When you look at, Everybody that's out there, they look, they, they look like one of your family members, and they truly are. And, exactly. and, and it's devastating and it's sad, but we got to do what we can to turn it around. And, and a lot is given to me and Jay-Z, and a much, is, you know, much is expected, and we're just trying to do the best we can. Exactly. So where are you now? Are you still in Miami? No, I'm in Atlanta now. Mm -hmm. I'm in Atlanta. Um, I just left L.A. I'm in Atlanta now. Did I'll be you? back there. It'll be Bad Boy South. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and Justin's Restaurant. Yeah, yeah, we yes. have um, Justice out here. Yeah. So o o also, also we're gonna be doing some stuff out here because a lot of the people came here that could get in their cars and evacuate. A lot of people evacuated from New Orleans to Atlanta. So there's gonna be also some efforts done out here. Good work, my dude. You know, I wanted to um come down and go to your party over um um VMAs, but I couldn't make it. But you know, thanks for the invites and stuff. And I'm gonna keep this telephone call here um, positive. But I need you to let me know approximately when your CD is going to be coming out, and we're gonna be doing this interview that yeah been promising yeah yeah we, we i mean th me and you are speaking on the air for the first time for a great cause and um you know we're going to do a uh a, a a a interview with each other a something something that people could understand how we have you know gotten our relationship back on track right um you know in, in the next couple of months you know but we're gonna but i definitely you know wanted to do this with you now i think yeah. this is even for a better cause better okay. situation yeah. but then also after all of this is is, is taken care of and hopefully god turns things around in a positive way I mean, you get busy with our unfinished business exactly because you promised me a no holds bar according to yeah. you yeah. yeah i mean we're we okay. gonna have it out that's what you want so yes. we're gonna do it so we can put it past us you know yes and um you know it's it's funny how uh tragedy brings it just brings people together. Like, I like how you and Jay have joined together. And in our own little way, I even like how you've called here and we're talking about this. And, and I'm showing restraint on my tongue and I'm keeping it just where it is. Because this, yeah. this is big. I'm glad that and you're we, we, And we, we know that's a lot for you, Wendy. And we appreciate you, yes. you know, keeping it focused on the people. And, and you know... You know, God will bless you for that, and you know, I, you know, I, I'll remember it. And when we get together, you can let it, you can let it loose. I'm gonna let it loose back, though. Okay, know? okay, fine. All right. Well, look, <laughs> if you stay on the phone for any more than ten more seconds, then I'm about to change the the turn, the tide. So let's yeah, get off yeah, the I, I gotta go, ma. Holler right. at you. God bless everybody, and whatever you could give, man, just ten dollars. A, a dollar, a penny, whatever is better than that. And most importantly, give your prayers up because God answers all prayers if you believe. Yeah. All right, Puff. Peace. Be easy. All right. I remember I got off the air one day and them, <laughs> them total bitches were downstairs waiting and everybody upstairs at the radio station is looking down, egging it on, waiting for something to go down. I wasn't yet married. My knight in shining armor screeched up in his car just out of nowhere. Didn't even know. I didn't even know what was about to happen. I'm standing in the door like what? And I'm literally about to go through. Now, I'm not like what? Like what? Let's fight because I'm not one of those type of broads. And plus there was three of them. The little Chinese man that drove the van. They were coming. There was no security or anything it was just them three fighting broads and me and my co-workers at shot standing upstairs trying to look down to see it all jump off they all knew when i said good night to everybody everybody's pressed up against the window i didn't even walk or bother asking what are you all looking for because you know when the clock strikes it's time to go it is time to go i i didn't get a chance to hit the sidewalk before I knew it, out of nowhere, and uh, there's a whole bunch of rah-rah going on outside, and I'm still trying to figure out what the hell is going on. And I send Cower and Skell out on the sidewalk, and he comes back in and says, that's total outside, and they were, they were about to set it on you. So Jennifer Lopez is um, talking about... <laughs> is talking about her exes with my friend Big Boy from Big Boy's Neighborhood. He's a big radio star, you know? Um, hey, Big Boy! Um, anyway, so uh, he asked Jennifer the ultimate who'd you rather question. And listen very closely, watch her response, and then I've got uh, my opinion, as I usually do. Uh, hit it. You look in the ocean, you mm -hmm. see two people floating. Oh, you can only pull up one because that's how much room you have on your raft. You look in the ocean, you see Ben Affleck. 
and you see Diddy. <laughs> And I also liked that she said, let them both drown. But then she came back, she backpedaled, and she said, you didn't see this part. She said, no, you know, Ben, you know I love you. And Puffy, I love you too. I adore that we're the last two people on earth who refer to him as Puffy. I don't like when people change their names in the middle of our relationship. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, like, don't tell me to call you Diddy. I, I know you as Puffy, that's it. Um, I would let them both drown too, Jen. I'm gonna tell you why. <laughs> uh, and, and I mean it. Uh, first of all, Ben Affleck gave me a $5 million pink ring. We bought a beautiful Gone with the Wind style house in Georgia. I put you in the Bentley and we did the video together. We paraded on the red carpet and you break off the engagement and embarrass me? Die! <laughs> And to twist the knife even further in the Ben Affleck, Jennifer Lopez thing is that it's not even like he's not the marrying kind. He went off and married the other Jennifer and they've got kids. Oh. Die, die, die. <laughs> Wait. And Puffy. Oh. You had me speeding through numerous traffic lights doing gunplay in a nightclub. You remember, you had me do the perp walk and spend a few hours in jail. Die! But we do have to investigate things around here. We don't just fly by the seat of our pants and just start talking. You know what I mean? So the investigation is done and now I can talk about Puffy and Drake and the punch in the face. It's time for Celebrity Fight. Hit it! Okay. So, the city, Miami. The nightclub, Live. Okay, <laughs> that's what, Live. Um, Puffy was furious. Well, some people were saying that Puffy was furious because Drake tried to hit on his girlfriend, Cassie. But that's not what happened. What happened is, Puffy's furious that Drake scored the song zero from 100 because Puffy felt the song belonged to him, meaning Puffy. The song was given to both gentlemen and Puffy was sitting on it for a long time. Like, you know, I'll get back to it. I, let me, you know, I haven't even listened to it yet. Well, give me, okay, okay, just, 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 I'll get round to it. In the meantime, Drake's like, I like this song. I want to record this song. You know, is Puffy going to do it or not? Because it's given to both of us. Um, so Drake ended up recording it. And as you know, that's the song of the summer. And, you know, a song that everybody snaps their neck to. And Puffy missed out on a big hit. So the guys see each other at Live Nightclub. Next thing you know, Puffy punches Drake in the face. Oh. Well, at first, I'm like, how uncivilized. There has to be more to this. Let's investigate. Yeah. Well, well, we did. And apparently this punch in Drake's face from Puffy is 10 months long overdue. Ooh. And I'm gonna tell you why. Drake has a history of disrespecting Puffy. Oh. And I've got the video footage to prove it. Look at this. Look at this, watch what happens. Drake, Mike's, Ooh. sit. Ooh. Now you know. You don't snatch somebody's microphone. Even when we do Ask Wendy, you know, I hold onto my mic tight the second somebody wants to take it. I'm like, no, the mic is the power. No, no. Now, we all know that Drake is very talented. Uh, you know, he sings, he raps. Some people think he's very, very handsome. Uh, you know, he's right now at the top of the charts as far as music is concerned and talent, but maybe this has gone to his head where he just feels as though he can walk around and disrespect a legend. <laughs> yeah, I said it. I can call it the way I see it. You know, who's better than Puff in terms of, you know, longevity in this game? Being a mogul, being a rapper, producing and, and making hits. Who's better? Not Drake. I, I can't think of anybody at this particular time. And also, respect that man's age. He's almost 50. Oh. No, not that that's a bad thing, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> he, 
He should have punched him in the face back in February when he grabbed his microphone. <laughs> I mean, okay, I understand. Drake's mic went dead. And Puffy was standing right next to him. But you don't grab somebody's, you don't grab somebody's anything, <laughs> much less a microphone from a legend. What he should have done this Drake is he should have gone to one of these people behind them. We don't know who those people are. I bet you they're not the only ones. Those two weren't the only ones with microphones. He could have grabbed a microphone from a lesser known upstart, <laughs> you know? Or snapped his fingers and waited for them to bring a microphone to the stage quickly. Aww. Quickly. Like, quick. We were debating this morning in the Hot Topics meeting, and, um, you know, some people were saying Drake should have apologized immediately after the performance. But you know what? If I were Puff, I wouldn't even accept the apology because I just wouldn't. Like, there's so many other things you can do than grab the microphone of one of your elders, you know? <laughs> I, I, I'm just saying, res, res, Respect the age and respect the gangster in the game, Drake, and don't let your success go to your head, young man. Uh, yeah, Lord, we brought in Lord Jamar from, uh, from Brand New Brand Newbie. Because mm -hmm. uh, he, he had made some comments about that. What did he say? Well, he talked about the whole feminization of hip hop culture from the 80s on. You know? I, think he's, I think he's taking the words out of my mouth. Yeah, I mean, he talked about how, you know, when, you know, when we were younger, you know, you were earring your left ear and that was considered straight and earring your right ear, that'd be gay. And then at one point, people started wearing both earrings yeah. and you know what I mean? And, and then, then they started wearing girl pants and then they're wearing jeggings. And then, yes, it's very effeminized, but be very clear. There were lots of homosexuals in hip hop back in the 80s too. Um, and, uh, you know, that was, that was, um, you know, what's worse, you know, hip hop wearing skirts or hip hop being closeted and having a plethora of kids to prove manhood that, you know, and, and denial of something that shouldn't, you shouldn't have to deny, which is your sexuality. Mm -hmm. So I hear what Jamar is saying, but uh, we come from a very homosexual era of hip hop as well. Uh, there was a radio personality once upon a time, her name was Wendy Williams, and uh, she was practically burned at the stake for, um, talking about such and now it's all come full circle there were many situations none of which to talk about but there were many situations um, back in the day in in my career and um, it's all coming full circle now so. so this thing about Puffy being arrested I'm not sure what to make of it because if you're a parent you know you go ham on anybody who messes with your kids um, but there's a, there, um, okay, he was arrested for assault with a deadly weapon and battery and making terroristic threats. The terroristic threat charge was just added this morning, right? Yeah, we just found that out about an hour ago. Well, here's what happened. So his son, Justin, plays um, the cornerback on the UCLA um, football team. And he's going into his junior year. And he's there on a full ride scholarship. Um, and so the boy, I guess, is, you know, serious about his sports. Um, Puffy is said to be a helicopter dad, you know, shows up and, you know, you know, you know what hel helicopter parenting is. <laughs> anyway, a helicopter dad. So apparently um, the team had practice early in the morning and Justin had missed quite a few practices and then he wasn't performing uh, suitable to whoever's watching over the team. I guess they would call that the coach. <laughs> He wasn't performing well, so they said, well, then go home. So I don't know whether he lives in a dorm, he went back to the dorm, or whether he went back to the mansion, but whatever he did, he talked to his dad, and his dad grabbed the keys, I suspect, to the Maybach, and ah, sped to the school to talk to the, the, um, the training coach, the weight coach, whatever it was, the one who sent Justin home. So when Puffy gets there, the coach is on the phone and the coach says, I guess, you know, wait, there he is right here. I know, don't, don't, don't do it, don't do it. Don't do it. Yeah, the girls are like, oh. Because <laughs> I said the same thing. Anyway, look, so dude is on the phone 
I guess Puffy's like, no, you know, you don't make you don't make me wait, and started going crazy, you know, on the coach and put his hand up like this, and and Puffy walked up to his hands like allegedly, you know, you don't put your hands up to me, right. and then uh, there um, he, he sent him out like to the weight room. Um, Jason, I guess, to his office. And when he gets out to the weight room, there's interns, there's witnesses around. And by the way, there's camera footage of all this, but we don't have it yet. First, the cops have to look at it, and then we'll get it. <laughs> look, look, look. <laughs> look, look. So then he gets out to the weight room and proceeds to swing a kettle at, at allegedly, th this is the kettle. You know, when you go to the gym, that's the one where you, you do this. <laughs> Ow, I hate them. <laughs> One day I'm gonna get so mad at the gym, I'm just gonna let it go and shatter the mirror. <laughs> anyway, but um, proceeded to allegedly, you know, swing the kettle at an intern. So um, the cops were called, Puffy was arrested. Um, I'm sure it wasn't an overnight stay, but there's got to be more to the story. Yeah. You know, and I would also think that um, they might be, wouldn't they perhaps want to now kick Justin off the team on the basis of what, uh, what his hot-headed father did? I don't know, you know, I'm, I'm split on this because the coach could have said some really wrong stuff to Puffy and also some wrong stuff to Justin on one hand. On the other hand, this is not Pop Warner football. This is, this is um, college ball where most guys on the team want to go and play for the big leagues. So you have to be hard on them. And if you can't take your kid getting the business from their coaches, then maybe you shouldn't be at the practices, only, you know, at the game. <laughs> on one hand. On the other hand, the coach used to also be some sort of coach or something for the Jets. So he's familiar, uh, but he also has a criminal past. <gasps> Well, he was charged with, uh, well, first of all, when he played in the NFL, he was suspended at one point for tripping a, a, another player. <laughs> and um, also, he was charged with assaulting three students while he was in college. So, in other words, even Steven. <laughs> Cassie. Eight years wasted, no baby. So now what will happen? Well, you know, she and Puffy have allegedly split up. This is a beautiful dress, by the way, that she has on. And Puffy, you look great for all the hard partying <laughs> that uh, we've all been through after a particular you know, period in our lives. Reportedly, Cassie found out that Puffy was cheating on her with another woman. Oh. Um, so, she broke up with him, and uh, I'm sure she'll be back soon. Or, she's got cachet now, because, you know, once you date a superstar, you'd be foolish not to use that cachet to bounce to the next superstar. Like, she's not gonna date, you know, like, you know. At this point, she spent eight years of her life being flown around the world in private planes, doing the best and wearing the best. Why is she going to date the principal of Ocean Township High School? <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, uh, but she's an actress, you know. Oh, oh yes, I didn't know either, but look. I thought she was a professional girlfriend. Uh, I, I, had, I, did, I had no idea. But apparently, she's over in South Africa filming Honey 3. Oh. Now, Honey, I didn't even know there was a Honey 2. Okay. <laughs> Remember, Honey 1 starred Jessica Alba. Yes. And she hasn't acted, I don't think, since then. Well, no, she's got the kids, and she's still married to Cash Warren, and she's got one of those good websites that shows us how to do stuff, and she's got um, the Honor Company, yeah. Honest Company, yeah. which that stuff is every place. Yeah. So she's got a good business. I'd say forget acting, too. It's too much work memorizing lines. 
Anyway, but back to Cassie. So Cassie's in South Africa filming Honey 3. And she uh, allegedly has been avoiding Puffy. And, um, you know, my thing about when you date a mogul is that it's really difficult to avoid them because if you use your head, you never know when they're going to pop up on the scene. Like, he's mogul. Like, he can hire a plane right now. Zoom it to South Africa. <laughs> land on the, on the roof of the hotel where she's staying. Okay. Pay people off at the front desk. Give me the key and let me up in her room. Like, I'd be... I'm already paranoid <laughs> as a person. But to know that somebody could actually swoop down on me in the middle of nothing <laughs> would scare the bejesus out of me. <laughs> it would, it would. Anyway, listen. Uh, the rumors of their split started because uh, Cassie didn't go to Puffy's birthday party, and that was uh, last month. And now, allegedly, uh, Puffy and his baby's mother, Kim Porter, were seen coming out of the sex store together. Oh. But my thing is, when you have three kids with a man, is it ever really over? Because no. people in my Hot Topics meeting, who don't have children, <laughs> You know, sometimes when people don't have kids, they don't understand that that will always be a tie that binds you, whether you sleep together or whether you just have pleasant conversation. Girlfriends can't compete with babies' mothers. That's what I mean. Oh, my gosh. The lady they just showed looked like she was having a coming to Jesus moment. She said, no. Nope. Yeah, yeah. I said, no. Um, but, yeah, and they were in the sex store. And um, then it was mentioned in Hot Topics, sex stores are really corny now. Who goes to sex stores? And I said, well, I guess a lot of people, but they're not what they used to be. Remember, you used to have to put on dark glasses <laughs> and a hat, and you'd go in and get your stuff, and then you'd leave. But these days, you don't even have to go to a sex store. Like, you could, anyway, uh, look, look, I don't care. Let's move along. <laughs> Okay. And one more thing they said to me, uh, well, Wendy, do you ever think Puffy will settle down? And I said, yeah. Like most men who think they're playboys when they're young, somewhere around 68 to 78 years old, when he needs help with his applesauce. <laughs> you know, or, or, or something. Yeah, he'll, he'll pick one and settle down, and that'll be that. But right now, no, I don't think he will. And I think that he's, like, leading this Playboy lifestyle where he's got these women in his life. Like, Cassie will be back. Mark my word. <laughs> and where he's got these women hypnotized. Which, by the way, do you know what? Um, you know the Ciroc, that, 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 the commercial with the, um, Frank Sinatra. And he's got on the suit, and he's with his dudes. He looks hot. Yeah. That's it. Anyway, please welcome Sean Diddy Combs. The drama of it all. Yes. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. I, I, I must say, it's been a long time coming. Yeah. And I want to just tell you how proud I am of you. Because... Because I, I, I don't think you get enough credit for being the first one to really cover our culture. You know, hip-hop culture and, and also hip-hop celebrities 
and, and, and just understanding that it's news, not just saying that's all that you cover, but you started shedding light on our culture and our people, and thank you very much. Thank you. I accept that. Yeah. And with that in mind, <laughs> I know I pissed a lot of people off, including you. Mm -hmm. But this is a full circle moment, yes, everybody. Yes. Get into adult yeah. conversation. Yeah, this yeah. Is full circle. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so you smell delicious. <laughs> You're, you, the, you can't feel it through the TV, but he's got finery on. Fi <laughs> like, finery. And uh, you, <laughs> and you've got diamonds in your teeth. <laughs> which, this is the thing, Lala was here the other day. Is that permanent? Hers aren't. Yeah, mine is. You're permanent? Yeah, yeah. How long you had that? Um, for like two and a half years. Yeah. I want to give you shoe cam. Put your feet on those feet. Okay. And while you're looking at his shoes, just check out his, the finery of, of what his entire suit is made out of. Yeah, there's a whole situation. Yeah. These, these are, um, these, these are St. Laurent's. Uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. <laughs> well, as long, as long as we're asking, and your suit? Um, um, Givenchy. Yeah. And you'll wear it once and you'll throw it away? No, 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 no. I, I, I like collecting pieces, so um, um, if I buy something, I feel like in three years it'll look better. As long as you keep your weight down, <laughs> right? True. Like, it is so good to see you, and I talk about this through the TV all the time. You know, like when Prodigy passed away, when we see fallen soldiers from our era, yes. doesn't that make you shed tears and haunt you just a bit? Like, damn. Mm -hmm. So knowing that like LL's a, a daughter just got married, he's mm -hmm. still with Simone, you're still standing, you look terrific, you and I've come full circle, mm -hmm. I feel good here, we're going into our ninth mm -hmm. season. And, but there are a lot of people who are just dropping by the wayside. Mm -hmm. I, I think right now also, because of that, I think people are more health conscious. And right now, right, right now, health is definitely wealth. And, and, and I think people are into giving themselves self-love and taking what care of themselves. Do? What, what do you do? You, I mean, I, to be honest, I just went through Ramadan and I, I fasted with um, a couple of friends of mine that are Muslim, so that's why I'm probably a little extra snatched right now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, puppy. Oh, and right. but, 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 but you know, you know what I've been doing? I've been really just really caring about what, what I put inside of me and just caring about like what I'm doing to myself. And, I think, I think that, that that's, that's the page. That's really the new wave. Because I haven't seen you in over 15 years, but I'm not seeing wrinkles. I'm, not, I, oh, I'm seeing good. Yeah. <laughs> it's good. Thank so, you. So, all right. Back to your lifestyle. Yes. Because I don't, you know, you live a really hectic lifestyle. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't understand all the running around and who are these people that you surround yourself yes. with? And, and, and who are these people? Do they violate you? Do you get robbed? What happens? Now, you mm -hmm. threw a house party and I got the <laughs> footage. Okay. <laughs> Look at this. Now, who has this many people at their house? Puff and, uh, or Sean, Diddy, Doody, what do I call you? <laughs> uh, like, I, I, you, I think you should call me Puff. You always call me Puff. I do. Yes. Okay. <laughs> First hurdle jumped. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I was nervous to come out here. I was drinking some Ciroc in the back and I... Yeah. Why didn't you bring some yeah. out? <laughs> we could have got turned up and really had a conversation. Can we get two Ciroc's on the rocks, please? Thank you very much. But... <laughs> <laughs> but so you have all those people at your yeah. house. Mm -hmm. And we talk, we were just talking on Hot Topics about Alyssa Milano and her business manager stealing $10 million. Mm -hmm. And I saw the list, I know you're tight. We don't have to go into it, but mm -hmm. I'll brag on you in my mind. We talked about it, rich, <laughs> very wealthy. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been ripped off in such a bad way that you had to file for bankruptcy or anything? Because I don't, no. I've talked about you a lot, but I don't recall financial talk. Yeah, no, um, my mother really wouldn't have that. My mother is, uh, that's my safety net. She stays on top of making sure that her vibration and what she feels, and she tells me like, I'm not feeling this, I'm not feeling that, and she makes sure that I sit down. Good. Um, okay, so <laughs> Puff Scott, Six beautiful kids. 
And I am particularly <laughs> fond of your twins because I love a twin situation. And that one on the left <laughs> person, her lips like, mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> But I, lo I love that you have, okay, six kids, three babies, moms. Yes. Okay. <laughs> and they all taken care of. I, you know, that's right. I know. I, know. I, I Look, <laughs> look. <laughs> you, you know? No, 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 but I, but I, I want to tell you the story about that. I, I, I met all of them in the same year, so I've known huh? all of them the same amount of time. But they, we, we were friends. <laughs> uh, no, 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 no. No, listen, listen. Whoa, why did I do that? Um, <laughs> did you meet all in the no, same No, no, I, I was just setting? trying to say it wasn't like I just was running around, you know, um, through my career and just, you know, every couple of years just um, being with, 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 with a new person. Like, this, these are people that were my friends and then I would get my heart broken and then my friend would be there and I would fall in love with my friend and then I would get my heart broken again. <laughs> So are you in love now? Yeah, I'm in love now. <laughs> and I, and, I, and I, wasn't, I was in love then, you know? Yeah, but you've been in love with Cassie for a while. Like, you yes. guys, this is, I mean, I'm not saying that, that you're sloppy or anything like that, <laughs> but I know that outside of your baby's moms and taking care of your kids and your empire, mm -hmm. you do like to party, okay? Yes. And there's nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I'm shocked that you and Cassie have gone this far, mm -hmm. like the distance. What is it about her that, you know? I mean, it's just like when a record comes on, the way she moves, yeah. like when I look at her, the way she smiles, oh. um, the way I see her look at me sometimes when I wake up and she's already awake, oh. you know? And the Met Gala, what the sitting on the steps was going on? <laughs> what, 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 what is going on here? Now, I'm gonna be honest, like, they didn't have my tickets right the year before, so I said, I'm gonna stun on them and sit on the stairs as my woman looks good and takes those pictures. Yeah. <laughs> Stay here. He's saying. <laughs> Up next, we're gonna talk more with Diddy, including his movie, and I wanna know about, where's G Depp? Okay. What's up with, what's up with uh, Loon? Okay. What's up with Craig Mack? Okay. Why wasn't Craig Mack on the tour? Okay. Next. Let's go. Puff strikes me as the kind of kid who was hanging out with you and still thinking about the future. I know I want to be in the music industry. He was making music that was making the ground shake. Oh, Puff changed the whole thing. Hit records after hit after hit after hit. Oh, definition of he believed in me more than I even believed in myself. Puffy had a vision. Vision? I, mean, I was like ready to die for this thing. Wow. Yeah. Okay, so that was a clip from Puffy's new movie, Can't Stop, Won't Stop. Yeah, make sure you all see it. It's available exclusively on Apple Music right now. So smart. Go check it out. Always making money, yeah. aren't you? <laughs> always, always making money. No, no, to, to, to be honest with this, it, was, it wasn't really about um, making money or putting it into theaters. I just felt like uh, uh, us as African-American men and women, we needed to have a story that had a happy ending, uh, a success let, story, and, and let, me know? let me tell you something. Um, as the mother of a now 16-year-old, mm -hmm. Who I met backstage, who's... Is, is, he did? He's a great, great young oh, man. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you represent a lot to a lot of people in general. I mean, you're an example to people who aren't black. Mm -hmm. Like, yes, we can. Yes, we can. You're an example to boys. Like, your boys, my mm -hmm. boys, their boys, boys in general. That it, it, yes, we can. Yeah. Yes. And, and it, to me, it's very important, very important that African-American males get to see something positive, not just who shot them this week, not the unemployment rate, not what they can't do, not incarceration, you know? Yeah, so um, Bad Boy Records, and I'm proud to say I was there on the ground floor. Yes, she was. Every step in the 90s. Hip-hop culture changed, I mean, you were flashy with the diamonds. Right before you, remember, it was the, the leather medallions and yes. things, it was more of the Daisy Age. Mm -hmm. Shout out to De La Soul, but yes. it, was a, it was a different time. Yes. Now here you are, you've got uh, your girls in fur bikinis, you're wearing diamonds and you're doing champagne. 
how did that all happen without you falling off the rail? Um, I definitely like jumped off the rail a couple of times. <laughs> and you know, I, I was having fun and I was enjoying myself, but I was just tired of seeing us portrayed just like with do rags or like, you know, gang rags on in, in the videos. You know, I, I was a fan a of- A little dusty. Yeah. Hip hop was a little dusty before Puffy came along. Yeah, I, I was a fan of, of, of just like, we, we know how to, I'm from Harlem, so the Harlem Renaissance, we have style. We, are very, we know how to dress, and, um, and, 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 and to, me, to me, the images are so important. The images are programmed, so it's like I want to program <laughs> um, positive images. I want to program also us being able to wear costumes like shiny suits and have fun and just really accentuate the positive, but also be aspirational and say, like, this is what we're going to get and achieve for ourselves yeah. also. And then... Craig Mack came before Biggie. Mm -hmm. Craig Mack came along, flavor in your ear. Mm -hmm. But then Biggie came along, and Craig Mack, as I can recall, had one other radio play song. Mm -hmm. Get Down. Get Down, right. And then nothing. Mm -hmm. Craig Mack was also, to my recollection, the only bad boy artist who's still with us who was not on the tour that you guys did. Yes. Why? Um, there, com there comes... One of the things I say is, is that in this music industry, you only have like a 1% success rate, you know, of, of really making it, you know, at, at, at the end of it. And, right. and people make different choices, whether to stay in, in the industry or not. And it's either you go crazy, you, you stay successful and keep your head on and you learn and you grow, or you turn to God. And, um, you know, a lot of people turn to God. Craig Mack turned to God, tur to God and, and... So did so, Mace, and, but he came back. Hmm? So did Mace at yeah, one yeah, point. Yeah, 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 Mace, Mace. Not came back, that's not what I mean, I mean, but you know what I'm saying. I mean, almost every artist, including myself, had to turn to God. After, after 20 years of being in the industry, there's yeah. no place else for you to go, you know? Mm -hmm. But, 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 but one, of the, one of the things I want to say is that, you know, when you hear about people being saved, there's like two types of people that are, are, are saved. Like, some people get saved and, and they really, really follow that strict regimen because they know that they can't walk on both sides. You so know? that's Craig Mack. And so Craig Mack made the decision that, that, that he was in a, in a place, in the right place, and he didn't need to get pulled back into the industry, even if, 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 even if it was for one night, and I respect that. And, and so then there's, there's Loon, there's g Depp. You know, some of these guys only had maybe one or two songs mm -hmm. on their own, and then they collaborated. Do these people call you wanting back in? L Loon, um, G. Depp's in jail. Right. And Loon is so, in jail. Okay, you know? never mind. Yeah. <laughs> never yeah. mind. Yeah. By the way, during commercial <laughs> break, so he whispers to me as we take our shot of um, Ciroc, and he says, ask me anything. Whoa. Yes. <laughs> I'm not going crazy, but I like that you say that. Yeah. Okay, so then the fateful night Biggie was killed mm -hmm. at the height of his career yes do you ever feel responsible in any way mm -hmm. in any way I mean I mean the thing that I think I always feel some sort of you know responsibility because I'm, I'm in this thing with him you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. he's my artist and um, he was supposed to go to London that night and you know I let him talk me into you know, not going to London and staying in LA. And that, you know, that, that's something that really bothered me, you know, throughout my life is sometimes you have to really go with that decision in your gut. And in my gut, I was like, you need to get on the plane. But um, sometimes when you don't listen to your gut, you know, and, and this is God's world, you know, it's his plan. Yeah. But, 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 you know, honestly, like, you know, that's, that's one of the things I regret not making sure that he went to London. Hmm. So you brought CJ out, um, Biggie's son. Mm -hmm. At the awards, um, what does he call you? Does he call you Uncle Puff? Uncle, yeah. Uncle, yeah. Uncle, he calls me Unc. Unc. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. So cute. Do you think you'll ever get married? I'm not. I'm not no, no, judging. No, 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 I, I mean, no. you could be a playboy, playboy. No, 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 no. It's not about being a playboy. It's like I, I think marriage. Is, 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 is so serious and it's, it's like <laughs> you, you're making a commitment to somebody <laughs> under God and, and unless you're ready to do everything that's said, then you shouldn't get married. And, and I'm... I... 
You're not ready. Yeah, I mean, I mean I'm gonna be honest, like, you know, a, a lot of my spirit had got lost through a lot of the things that, that I went through, is, you know, even with the Biggie situation, and then just in life lost. in general. And, and I just, I just, I really just started understanding how to really love myself and, and really focus on what's important, you know? Really? Yeah, I really did. Life is a journey. Yeah, life is a journey. It really is. And so I, I have to get myself together before I'm, I'm all the way together, before I'm really ready for that, because that, that, that to me is something very, very serious. And, and one day I, I, I hope that I'll find that. Aww. Not that I'll find that person, but I'll be able to do that. Find it within yourself. Yeah, I want to find it within myself. And then Not... deliver yourself to that yes. woman. Yes, yes. Yeah. Yeah. You are exhausting me. Let me tell you something. <laughs> this week has been hella exhausting. <laughs> Lala come, talks about Mello. Mm -hmm. um, Lamar was here yeah. yesterday mm -hmm. for a one-on-one. -on -one. Wow. And we talked, we cried, we laughed. Wow. It was hella exhausting. Yeah. And then meeting up with you. Yes. Now, before you go, I do want to acknowledge that in addition to everything great that you're doing, You've got a charter school. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. Um, they're wrapping me up, but I want okay. you to tell me about it very quickly. Yeah, it's Capital Prep. It's in Harlem. It's a charter school. Um, I feel like our community's in a state of emergency. Education is the, the first step to turning around and making sure that our kids have a bright future. Um, um, and I don't feel like the government or, you know, even any, any of the powers to be are, are sending any rescue parties for us. We have to save ourselves. And so at the end of the day, that's the step that I took. Look, <laughs> this has been decades in the making. Yes, yes. Don't be a stranger. I won't be a stranger. Okay. Yeah. Give it up for Sean, Puffy, Diddy, Combs. <laughs> Can't you. stop, won't stop. A Bad Boy Story is available now on Apple Music. All right, man. Um, you know, Wendy, we had a good friend of ours, Pete Diddy, who came by the show. And, um, oh, okay. Yeah. And, um, oh, God. And we, we have this clip of something Pete Diddy said about you. What? Please welcome Sean Diddy Combs. Oh, that's a Diddy on your show, right? <laughs> I, I, I must say, it's been a long time coming. Yeah. And I want to just tell you how proud I am of you. Because, because I, I, I don't think you get enough credit for being the first one to really cover our culture and, and, and just understanding that it's news. <laughs> Not just saying that's all that you cover, but you started shedding light wow. on our culture and our people, and thank you very much. Thank you. I accept that. Yeah. <laughs> And with that in mind, <laughs> I know I pissed a lot of people off, including you. Mm -hmm. But this is a full circle moment, yes, everybody. Yes. How, how, you, listen, dope. man, I, I, when I saw that, knowing that the history dope. behind all of that. Because uh, you know the history. Yeah, well, break it down for our listeners. No. I wasn't, okay. <laughs> no, I don't feel like it. I'm exhausted. You're exhausted of the history. But y'all have bad blood for a while. Real you, bad. Real bad blood. The worst blood. The worst blood. You almost mm -hmm. he wanted to run you out of New York at one point, right? Run? Well, really? not run. You know, like, push you out of New York ran at out. one point. Oh, he was, oh, he had you ran out. You give him full credit for that? You get, okay, cool. He had you ran out of New York. And then y'all came full circle. Now he's on your show. How did that feel for you? Like Wonderful. It, yeah? It felt wonderful. You know why? You know why? Like, we were talking about fallen soldiers, yeah. you know, people from our era mm -hmm. who die or you see somebody and they've, you know, they don't look the same, you know, mm -hmm. bad way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, you see, we see a lot of that mm -hmm. now. Mm -hmm. For me, Puff coming and representing the height of the Forbes list, yeah, the number one entertainer, not rapper entertainer, he beat Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt, all them people, the Cloonies, the Doonies, and the Boonies. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. He's number one. He, that's my error. Mm -hmm. uh, I helped him do Bad Boy. He knows, he knows, mm -hmm. he knows. We were all in the trenches together at a particular time. And um, just good. Felt great. It, it, real great. Mm -hmm. And a real um, accomplishment, hopefully, to show 
maybe some of the younger people mm -hmm. or somebody, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. somebody can try to, you know, do you in. But the, the power of forgiveness and the power of going on and making it. Because I've always been motivated by haters, including my parents, yeah. <laughs> you know. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You got a pretty face if you lose some weight. Says my dad when I'm a young girl. Mm -hmm. The first man you're supposed to love. How do you deal with that? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, <clears throat> yeah. I appreciate uh, Puff. Yeah. And I appreciate that I don't have to call him Diddy. Because oh, he, he, told, he, he told you that. <laughs> yeah, I don't know him as Diddy. That's, yeah, yeah, that's Puff. That's Puff. That's Puff. That's Puff. Anyway, no, I, I appreciate that. And I will uh, cherish that moment. And, um, and... Did y'all did did have to do any due diligence beforehand, or that was the first nope. time when you saw him on stage? Was uh, the excuse first... me, what yeah. did I just talk to you yeah. about when you <laughs> tried to say hi to me in the hall? Yeah, yeah, don't talk to me, Sway. <laughs> yeah, go back in the room. Come on now. He wanted to come. Um, he, he wanted to come. Yeah. Okay. Puff wanted to come to the show. It's been a long time coming because, you know, schedules have to be negotiated and whatnot. But he showed up. He smelled great. His stomach is flat. Heather, he was handsome. Mm. And uh, he ain't going nowhere. No. Clearly. Can't be stopped now. Can't stop, won't stop. Bad boy for life. Bad boy for life. That was a big moment for those yeah. who know. That was, and I, and I was happy for the both of you. Yeah. You know? And and he also uh, let me know, uh, no question, off limits, which I hate when publicists get in, in the way of stuff and screw up interviews by saying, you know, you can't ask this, you can't ask that. It ruins interviews. Um, I, li I like being... As your publicist sits on the couch. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, she's over there. I'm big time now. I'm smoking my fake cigarette. Okay. <laughs> Puffy wants to have more children. And this time with his girlfriend, Cassie. Well, you know what? I don't mind this, because you know what? There's, there are people who have a lot of kids, and we call them sloppy, and we look at them like, mm-hmm. <laughs> Puffy already has six children with three women, including hood triplets. <laughs> you know what a hood triplet is, right? That's, that's when you have these two girls are twins, and then this one here was born at the same time in another state with another woman. That's a hood triplet. Like a hood divorce where you just move out and never file papers. Anyway, um, he recently said that he wants two more with Cassie. Yes. Cassie's only 31. <laughs> Puffy's oldest, Justin, is 27, I believe. 24. Uh, oldest is Quincy, 26, and then Justin, 24. All right, the oldest, Quincy, 26, and 24. Right, look, Puffy's worth over $300 million. And I really love his love for her. When he came to our show, remember how he swooned over her? Yes. No, you didn't. You weren't watching. <laughs> but but um, when he was here, you know, because Puffy and I have been through things in the past, but now we're in a good place, so I'm yes. not going to mess this up. Yes, right? <laughs> like, We did a grown people makeup right here yeah, on the show. So if you missed it, you missed a good one. Anyway, but yeah, he loves her and admitted it and went into it like extolling the greatness that is Cassie. And she's been around for a while, you know? And I do believe that um, she, at 31 years old, why shouldn't he have two more children? He can afford it. And you never hear about his kids doing anything wild. You never hear about him not paying any of his baby's mothers or not taking care of the kids. You know, he, he's proven to be a stand-up father. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And Puffy's 48, and so, you know, why not get in there? <laughs> Plus, this, this is the thing, this is the thing. When you get older, as in, you know, in age, you get softer, as in your heart. You know, you look around and you say, wow, you know, look what I've created. I've got all these children. I've got this young girlfriend now, though. And I really do love her, and she deserves more. Now, in the Hot Topics morning meeting, they said, well, maybe Cassie should ask for a ring before the kids. I said, 
These days, people don't need a ring. She's with Puff. You get those two kids. As a matter of fact, Cassie, just have twins so you can, one and done. Get the twins going. And maybe he's not the marrying kind, but he definitely is a stand-up um, father and seemingly boyfriend and a stand-up businessman. So would you be bugging if you didn't have the ring? Clap if, you, clap if she needs the ring. You all are corn tea. You have no idea what you'd be walking out on. But we're a little older. So sometimes we think that way. I mean you, not me. No, because I'm out here in these streets. So, you know, my mindset's a little bit different than the average older person. I don't think she needs a ring. I think that it's great that he wants to have kids with her. And, and um, good luck. Please sit down. Please sit down. I've got something very important to tell you. After 11 years of romance, Puffy and Cassie are officially broken up. I mean... It's everywhere, including People Magazine, so you know it's true. So Puffy is 48, Cassie's 32, 11 years of her life. I was asked during our morning meeting, do I think that she wasted 11 years? I, I said, well, in a lot of ways, yeah, because you know, when, when you're in your 20s, like she, she probably doesn't know how to apply for a mortgage. <laughs> no, no you, no, you laugh, but I'm talking about the practical things of life, you know? Doesn't know how to apply for a mortgage. Um, she's probably always been on his insurance, you know, so she needs an insurance car, a Cigna or something to get all checked out. <laughs> you guys are laughing. How to buy a car. Is, is renting, leasing, or buying practical for her? Maybe how to drive a car. Just saying. I like them together. And um, on the other hand, it wasn't 11 years wasted because she introduced, or he, Puffy introduced her to a world that she would never know. Because I still, for the life of me, and I, I like you, Cassie, and hi, Puff, but I still don't know what Cassie does except for walk around and look pretty. <laughs> Do you know a Cassie song? Exactly. So People Magazine, Love B. Scott, everybody's reporting this. Cassie, you're now elevated, and you're only 32. If you want to go on and have a baby or... You know, but you're in the club, you know that elite club once you mess around with somebody elite. Then all of a sudden, like your next boyfriend might be a multimillionaire, certainly not as much money as Puffy, he's got it all. But, uh, what to say? Like, I'm, I'm really, I'm sad about this, you all. I thought they were gonna get married. When Puffy was on this show, he was like, yes, you know, I'd love to, her to have a baby and marriage and, and all that other kind of stuff. Well, according to Love B. Scott, Puffy is now dating. Uh, Jocelyn Chu. Now, I'll tell you about her. She's 26, and they reportedly have spent some time together in Miami, and they also went to a Drake concert together. Now you know, that's on the up high. That's not even like sneaking around with somebody or, or interviewing a new girlfriend. That's like the real deal. Um, what do I think? I'm sad, you know, uh, but the older he gets, I guess the younger the girls have to get. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like maybe he feels like Cassie's old at 32. Oh, damn it, man. It was in January, Puffy said he wants kids with Cassie. Oh. I don't know, I, you know what? I want them to get back together secretly, but only get back together for a moment of time before you say you're engaged, she's pregnant, and you're getting married. I, I like, like, I'm a sucker for that. All that. Yeah, yeah. So, Puffy wants Cassie back. Oh, it's been all over social media. He's using it to try to help him, to get support. Cassie posted a photo of herself the other day. Here's the photo. And he commented, love you forever. Well, I thought that he was now with a 22-year-old. 
or something. Maybe not a permanent girlfriend, but you know, just snacking around, you know. Puffy posted a picture of Michael Jackson's song, Lady In My Life, and wrote, if anyone sees Cassie this weekend, please tell her to listen to this song 100 times. <clears throat> would that get you? It would get me. Would that get you? It, it would get me. It, 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 it would get me. It, it, but it depends, it, well, it depends on what he's done. Why are they broken up? She spent 11 years with him. She's 32 years old. She's got no children, which, by the way, in thinking over the weekend about kids or no kids, because you know I'm quick to say, okay, you know, he's got money and so on, you, you invested your time, have the baby. But you know what? There's nothing better than a clean break when you're young enough to go on and do your own thing. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. Cassie doesn't have to deal with any of that baby mama drama and, and all that mess. All she, it's 32, she'll get another, she'll, she'll get another. <laughs> After they broke up, uh, Cassie posted, F these hoes. <laughs> so is that implying that he's been cheating on her? Yes. Well, <laughs> let me say, of course. Um, I want them to get back together. <laughs> like, in my, oh, shut up, I'm a cancer. <laughs> you know I'm emotional. We've already cried on the show today. We cry, we laugh, we go home. That's the show. <laughs> um, I want them to get back together only because they seem so adorable together. And then when he came here on our show and he expressed to her, you know, how much he loves her and stuff, like public announcement. <sighs> and she doesn't have much of a career. <laughs> I mean, what is Cassie doing? She's working on an album. She's 32, which is about 10 years too old for, for the kids who would care to buy. Um, I suggest don't use social media, though, to reach out. I think this is a grand overture from Puffy. I don't believe he really wants her, wants her back. I believe he probably treated her at some particular point like a possession, like a, like a possession. And if you really care, then you'd reach out privately, not publicly. Yeah, but 32, no kids, clean break. Move on with your life. You got this, Cassie, you got it. Mm -hmm. It's not just swelling, you could have lymphedema also. Puff, puff, puff. Speaking of which, hi, Puffy. <laughs> so, the word is, so the word is he's bringing back making the band. Yeah. Yeah. So, he announced it on social media yesterday. Take a look. Making the band 2020. That's, I, I really want to do this. I really think that I would have a good time. And I really think, no, I know that I'm going to build the biggest band in the world. <sighs> Making the band is back. The sensei is back. The teacher is back. We back, baby. Yeah! Okay. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Two things that I was beautifully distracted by. First of all, the mansion in the background. Like, wow. Second of all, the teeth. What a beautiful compound, right? That's out in LA, he's raising the kids and doing that thing. Look, he doesn't need this money. He doesn't even need the attention. They had making of the band, and to my best ability, all I can remember is Dan Eddie Kane, but I can't tell you one song. All I know is Aubrey O'Day. You know, she's like the Beyonce of the group. Well, 
It aired for three seasons, Making of the Band. I didn't realize that. Oh, they also had the band. And remember, one of those girls got heavily sur surgicalized, so you don't recognize her anymore. <laughs> um, look, I, you know, this is fun. It's a great idea. Um, I don't know whether it's gonna be on his revolt or whether it'll be on, you know, Fox or... It's, it's, it's MTV. It's gonna be on MTV? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. Well, you know what? He doesn't need this. The thing is that the bands don't go on and become great successes from what we've seen. This band probably won't either because you don't listen to what he's saying. <laughs> no, people just want automatic fame. You don't listen. If he says get cheesecake at three o'clock in the morning, you better go and get that cheesecake. <laughs> and the thing is, that he's searching, he's searching for global talent. So wherever you are, come one, come all, to his Halloween ball. You know, you can upload an audition video on social media using the hashtag MTBcasting. And the show will premiere next year on MTV, but here's the deal. If you don't listen to him closely and follow direction, you too will be like Danity Kane. Who? <laughs> da Ban. What? Listen, he, he was an intern, remember, where he comes from. He was the one getting the cheesecake at three in the morning. Yeah. And by the way, so was I. So if you don't listen to people who tell you, then, then all you're gonna do is be a Danity Kane. Anyway, I'm watching the show regardless. Good job, Puff. <laughs> Puff announced that he was returning with that show, Making of the Band. And one of his fans tweeted um, and asked um, Puff that she sh he should have Aubrey O'Day. Um, and Danity Kane return. And so Aubrey responded by saying, you know he can't finish any artist he starts. Oh. Well, that sounds like sour grapes. I mean, I, 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 Aubrey, and you know I like you, but I'm calling it like I see it. Like you're more successful at reality TV than you are with music. I don't know one Aubrey or Danity song, and that's real. Do you? Clap if you do. But clap if you saw her on Apprentice. Oh, yeah. And I, yeah, she did Apprentice and um, what else did she do, Norms? She did uh, this show called Famously Single. Famously Single, where right. she met Polly D. She's right. on X and the Beach right now. Right, right, yeah. right, oh. <laughs> so she's good at that, but maybe not so much at the singing. Listen, Aubrey, Sour Grapes, he's, he might not have finished with Dan and E. Kane, but maybe that's because you all thought you were bigger than you really were and you weren't listening to the master. As I said before, you know, um, Little Kim was created by Puffy. She's a legend and icon. <laughs> Faith Evans, Mary J. Blige, you know, Biggie Small, <laughs> Janelle Monet. I, French Montana, Machine Gun Kelly, where do you wanna go with this, Aubrey? Get your facts. That's all. I gotta get out of here, I got things to do. She just got tired of having to sneak around and we never saw it, you know, we're nosy here. We never saw them kissing or going to dinner or anything. And finally, I guess they were both like, look, let's just cut this, let's get together. He's not marrying me. I want a baby. I one day want to be a wife with a baby. I've been with him for 11 years. I'm still young. I'm beautiful. She sings, so she's a talent, and he has his business. And if I were Puff, this would be the day I'd stay in bed all day crying. <laughs> Just only because, you know, Puff, and you know, I love Puff. <clears throat> I respect his hustle. But you know, a guy who's been a boss for so long like Puff, he's used to having people do what he wants. And when they don't, then he's used to seeing them buried under the bus afterwards. Like, think about it. When Puff is done with you, he drops you like Black Rob. <laughs> who, who, who was his rapper uh, person and now he's in jail. Drops you hard like Aubrey O'Day. <laughs> I, I mean, think about it. You, you don't just walk away from Puff and see success. Once upon a time, there was a music mogul who sent his all-girl group to beat my ass in front of the radio station. Fact, fact. And I finished my, ra I finished my air, oh God. Anyway, I finished my shift, wound up my headphones, put my bag in the crook of my arm, 
and see everybody lined up at the window looking down on the sidewalk. And I, you know, I, I just work, you know, I have coworkers, they weren't friends. You know how I tell you all, you better be careful of your coworkers because you work before they're, nobody's paying your bills but you, right? So um, I'm wrapping up my headphones and I'm going downstairs. My new boyfriend at the time, the bad Kevin, he was picking me up. <laughs> but no, this is when he was the good Kevin, right? So, so I'm walking in the elevator with my intern at the time, Skeletor, and, and, but look, I'm like, why is everybody looking down at the sidewalk? I mean, noses were pressed to the glass. And I get downstairs and find this girl group jump out of a gypsy cab to come after me to kick my ass. And I'm like, for what? You know what I said was true. You all are broken. You were living in the projects. And that was that. But, but the, the point I'm making is, you know, Amanda, you shouldn't have, go I didn't get back on the radio and talk about it. What I did was desire to do better so I can have a purple chair and talk about it right now and then have the whole scene play out in the Lifetime movie. So, Amanda, I'm sorry what happened to you. I need to know more of the story. But we've got more of this story today. And I always like to say, I could be anywhere I want, but I choose to be home or where I want to be. This weekend, I was invited to P Puff, thank you so much. Um, I just, I, like, cause I have to be here on Mondays and I just, happy 50th birthday. <laughs> People like you, I don't really understand. His actual birthday was November, November 4th. Why do you have to drag it out? Like we, <laughs> We already know you're the king of everything and your sparkly jacket and stuff. Well, all right, so this is four months after, uh, excuse me, one month after his actual birthday, November 4th. Mary performed, Dougie Fresh performed, little Kim performed, Usher performed. This was at his mansion, correct? That's the address so. that I had. Yeah. Like right. Some, something or another that I was like, okay. Eh. <laughs> Jay-Z and Beyonce were there. Kim and Kanye were also there. Jay-Z and Kanye appeared to bury the hatchet. Puff posed with a picture um, with um, Jay-Z and Kanye and Pharrell. And people are saying Jay-Z doesn't look happy. I don't... <laughs> I, I, excuse me, Pharrell is not even in the picture. <laughs> Kanye is off to the left as usual. And Puff is Puff because he knows how to strike a pose. <laughs> anyway, the video from the party went viral. It shows Jay-Z ripping a phone out of a man's hand because she, he was trying to take a picture of Beyonce dancing, having a good time. I'm shocked, like, like I am shocked at that level of the game that people are even doing corny mess like that. Pulling out a phone. Fun. Um, so, then I read that Lizzo went into full-blown twerking at like four o'clock in the afternoon. And Puffy shut it down because he said, this is not appropriate, this is not appropriate. That, he wasn't fat shaming. What he was doing is time shaming. Four o'clock, excuse me, in the afternoon. But, spicy uh, Doria, he stopped spicy, twerking. I know, wait, hold on. Spicy, okay. I'm not gonna eat until we're finished, but sp <laughs> spicy Doritos, I love a fancy um, cutlery, and you know I love caviar. A little caviar and some Doritos. This brings me up high, this keeps me exactly where I need to be, right here, <laughs> acting a fool. <laughs> anyway, so then, so he stops Lizzo, but then Drea twerks, full-blown twerking, at 10 o'clock at night. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, this is not fat shaming. What this is, is time shaming. You don't twerk in front of kids at four o'clock in the afternoon. People who don't have children would not know that because you're just living for your, excuse me, Norman, you're living for yourself and you do it all the time. Do you want <laughs> kids? No, I don't. Do you like kids? I love kids. I just don't want my own. But also, I mean, I you can't, convinced me that it wasn't fat shaming. Sorry, puppy, I love you. 
Well, he covered it real well because I believe that, that it was time shaming. You know, as a mother, I know what happens at four o'clock in the afternoon on family day. By 10 o'clock at night, all those kids are in the west wing of the mansion compound. They've got a nanny per kid. There's like, you know, 55 kids in there and they are all coloring, spray painting, silly stringing, sleeping, whatever they're doing. The nannies are instructed, lock the door, do not let these kids out. (laughs) And then that's that's when adults turn up. And that's what uh, Drea was doing. That's all. Look, I'm trying to I'm trying to see both sides of the coin. Okay, you know she's not my favorite person, but you know we 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 all uh, fall down and then get up.